Thank you, Mr. Minister, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor and pleasure to attend this excellent gathering. I would like to thank the government of uh, Croatia for the invitation to this beautiful environment as Dubrovnik is. The Czech Republic ranks among the most vocal advocates of integration ambitions of the Southeastern Europe to the European Union and NATO. My main focus today is going to be the, the EU's aspiration in the areas of security and defense policy after the entry into force of the Lisboa Treaty. The European Union is in the midst of a very challenging period with the dark cloud of high public deficits hanging over the majority of the member states. We have a heavy load on our shoulders that we have to deal with. At the same time, there are high expectations tied to Lisboa Treaty when it comes to the tuning up the EU's performance in security and defense and foreign policy in general. In recent weeks, steady progress has been made when it comes to the sharpening of institutional tools for a joint action in the external front. The political deal on the European Union External Action Service has been hammered out recently amongst the EU institutions, and the blueprint is waiting for an approval of the European Parliament. Yet, honestly speaking, I feel it has not been happening with much of an accompanying strategic political debate about the direction the EU should take or better is capable to take in pursuing its interests and making the most out of its collective weight. First and foremost, it will be the political will of member states to back collective action in the area of security and defense especially. After all, rather than a ready-made formula to achieve the desired effect, the Lisboa Treaty gives us a blank check it is therefore our collective responsibility to determine how much we want to draw on it. With respect to that, I would like to spell out the following messages. Firstly, a realistic approach to the EU security. We have an opportunity to draw the line behind the time when the cooperation in this field resembled not much more than the marriage of inconvenience between two ideas of European security and defense. So instead of committing to overstretched goals, the EU should focus, at least in the imminent future, on developing and strengthening of those capabilities that give it unblock a real added value vis-a-vis -vis NATO and the OESC, as well as on the international scene in general. I believe the EU's Balkans experience render important recollections of lessons learned in both positive as well as less flattering sense. Yet looking at the EU's performance in the conflict zones, such as Georgia, Afghanistan, and some parts of Africa, broadly speaking, the ESDP had over the recent years developed into quite an effective crisis management and humanitarian tool. As a result, the EU possesses a rather unique set of both civilian and military know-how. And I am therefore convinced that this is where we first and foremost should direct our efforts to strengthen what is now called the common security and defense policy at this stage. Secondly, improving EU-NATO cooperation. It is crystal clear that should the project of common security and defense policy in the future be faithful to its new name, it will have to be developed against the background of better interinstitutional relations between the EU and NATO. For the Czech Republic, the NATO is the cornerstone of the European security, and we have been continuously pushing for reducing of the cooperation deficit with the European Union. I am convinced that there are now good conditions to move forward. Gradually, a better understanding has developed in the EU that by strengthening the Union's capabilities, we can at the same time strengthen those of NATO, not the contrary. NATO is currently debating the draft of its new strategic concept, while the EU is gradually getting into its new modus operandi under Lisboa Treaty. I see this a good time to try to seal the political will of both parties to give mutual cooperation better shape with concrete steps. It would not only be beneficial for the functioning of the two bodies, but also give further stimulus to the transatlantic bond and EU's cooperation with the key allies both within NATO as well as outside of it. 
Take, for instance, countries like Australia, whose role in Afghanistan have been indispensable. In general, given the nature of the security challenges and threats we face, our mutual cooperation will be as existential as never before. Last but not least, continuing with enlargement. Both EU and NATO are next to common interest, first and foremost built around shared values, and they must keep on spreading further. There still are countries waiting at the doorstep of both EU and NATO, without which our political and security structures cannot be considered complete. Croatia and Albania have now been for more than a year member of NATO. The Czech Republic strongly supports integration ambitions of the entire region and pushes for speedy accession of Croatia to EU. We are glad to see all the major political obstacles are out of the way now. Croatia's joining the EU ranks would be a huge investment and an important commitment to the future of the entire southeastern Europe. Thank you for your attention.